you're very welcome folks to another live stream on this Saturday. Thanks for being with me. In this stream I'm going to be going through this driving test report sheet. I'm going to be sharing with you some driving test tips from another instructor in County Kilkenny and I'll also be sharing with you some tips and advice in general and I'll be answering your questions as well. Uh, any questions you have on driving uh, or the test or learning to drive let me know in the comment section and I'll answer it and if I don't know the answer uh, I'll get back to you later or I'll um, you know if you share an email with me I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you then. So uh, let's see let's start off with some um, quick announcements I suppose as I usually start off with. Um, you can now apply for the learner's permit and the driving lessons or sorry let me start it again you can now apply for your learner's permit and your driver's license online uh, for first times or for renewals okay you can also update personal info you can replace a lost or stolen license and exchange a foreign license for an irish license this can all be done online now you just need your public services card and a verified mygov id and it takes a lot of the hassle out of it you don't have to go and uh, make an appointment and all that kind of stuff so that's a great facility folks it's going to be rolled out more and more as the as time goes on so uh, if you want to find out more about applying online for your permit or your driving license, check out NDLS in the blue up there, ndls.ie, loads of information there, okay? The RSA are uh, always um, promoting the fact that face masks must be worn, so it's always a good idea to, if you're getting lessons for a test or learning to drive, make sure you wear your face mask in the lessons. Now, I'm presuming everybody does uh, because it's proper health and safety procedure, but if you do, obviously you're being safer, but you're also preparing uh, for what it's going to be like on the driving test as well. So make sure you wear your face masks and wash your hands and show good hygiene in the lessons and, of course, in the test as well. NCT. Some people are asking about NCTs. There is a four-month extension on NCTs and there was an eight-month extension for uh, cars, N car NCTs uh, earlier last year. But the main thing is it's four months now. Uh, from July onwards the extension but it can depend on the um, original expiry date of the NCT so make sure you go to NCTS you see it in the green up there www.ncts.ie where you can check when your NCT is out of date and you can check the validity of it okay so yeah there is a four month extension uh, on the discs from July but make sure you check that on the website just to be sure okay um so other things like i mentioned last week uh the rsa are experiencing delays in uh getting back to people or, or answering calls so it is advised if you do have to call them to call maybe at off peak times like very early in the morning or you know you know around nine o'clock or maybe maybe late afternoon because um they have staff shortages probably due to people working from home and all that kind of stuff so just try and bear with them uh they are experiencing high demand at the moment but anything to do with your driving test anything to do with your uh driving test application go to myroadsafety.ie you should be able to pick your test date and all that stuff there and you can track your your journey from from the permit right up to the uh, application to the driving test uh myroadsafety.ie that should be your go-to place for applying for the test uh, and uh, everything to do with it okay so a couple of comments in there folks let's see what we got here kira ivers hi then thanks for everything you do you're very welcome when turning right from a side road into a main road am i allowed to turn into the yellow box while the lights are waiting to turn green thank you um you are allowed to enter the yellow box um while you're waiting to turn right but let me just read that comment again to make sure i'm reading it correctly when turning right from a side road uh into a main road um side road to main road i'm allowed to turn into the yellow box while the lights are waiting while the lights are waiting to turn green does that mean while the lights are red and you're waiting for them to turn green uh, i'm not sure about the wording of that question kira ivers but let's see um if you, you can't wait in the yellow box um on a red light so like if the light is red you should wait behind the first white line and then when the light goes green then you can roll into the box and wait for a suitable gap wait for oncoming cars to clear and then finish your turn 
Uh, if there's no lights, it should be no problem. Uh, so if there's, if there's no traffic lights, you should, you should roll up into the yellow box because it's a right turn and prepare for your right turn. Then, um, I think that's what I think that's what you mean. So it, just comment again, Kira, if if you want to clarify that. But um, you can certainly wait in the yellow box when you're turning right. But just just don't don't go past the white line if the light is red. Okay, you can you can only go into the box, uh, you know, through a green light. So I hope that clears it up. Void check global. Hi then, there's a wrong date in the thumbnail of your last live stream. Oh God, is there? Sorry about that, Wojciech. And thank thank you for bringing that to my attention, uh, Wojciech. In the thumbnail of your last live stream, 31st of January. Oh yes, yes, okay. I'll have a look at that and I'll, I'll check that out then, yeah. yeah. Thanks for uh, mentioning that, Wojciech, because you know, some things like that, they, they get kind of slipped through and I wouldn't realize it, so my mistake there, but thank you. Marina Ryan, good morning. Good morning to you, Marina. Alice Kennedy, good morning. How long does the driving test take? Well, Alice Kennedy, <clears throat> it varies from six to eight weeks. It depends on where you are. I asked around a few instructors and it, it completely varied from three weeks to eight to 12 weeks. It just depends where you are. It, it depends these days if you're an essential worker because you shouldn't be doing a driving test unless you're an essential worker. Um, and if you're on the cancellation list, uh, you could easily get it in a few weeks. If you go to myroadsafety, excuse me, .ie, you could choose a date uh, a lot sooner than the average waiting list. So to, to answer your question in a slightly inaccurate and, un and unofficial way, the waiting list is about 8 to 12 weeks, but it can be a lot less than that if you get a cancellation, and less still if you go to myroadsafety.ie and try and pick a date. A um, couple more comments then, folks, before we move on to some tips. Um, let's see, uh, Marine, let's see, Alice Kennedy, I, I said, got to Alice, yeah. Marina Ryan, do you know the waiting time for Limerick test? I don't actually know that, Marina Ryan. Uh, I don't know too many, I don't know of too many instructors in Limerick that I can reach out to. Uh, again, I'd say it's about eight, eight or nine or ten weeks, I'm guessing. Um, with the potential for it being a lot less if you were to request a cancellation or if you were to go on myroadsafety.ie. You can fill out a form to, to say you're an essential worker and tick a box that says you agree to the terms that you're an essential worker, all that kind of stuff. And you may well get it like a lot less than the 8 to 12 to 16 weeks that it could be, you know. Kira Ivers there again. Uh, what time is it prohibited to sound the horn? Is it eleven to seven? Is it eleven p.m. to seven a.m. or eleven thirty to uh, seven a.m.? I keep seeing conflicting. And yeah, that's it's uh, what's eyes. I'm not sure. Let me just check. The worst of the rules of the rule book. Just to make sure. I think it's eleven thirty, but I'll just check it in the in the rules of the rule book here, just to be sure. Um, let me see, horn, using horn, page 65, rules of the road book, um, just to make sure that we have the right answer, using a horn, only use a horn to warn other road users of oncoming danger, or to make them aware, sorry, to make them aware of your presence, like in an emergency, or if they're coming towards you and you think they don't see you, uh, the horn does not give you the right of way, uh, do not use the horn in a built up area between 11.30 at night and 7 in the morning unless there is a traffic emergency, okay? So I'll read that again just about the horn because that's a great question from Kira. It could easily come up in your theory aspect, okay? Here it is again. Do not use a horn in a built up area between 11.30 at night and 7 in the morning unless there is a traffic emergency, okay? So just put that back there. Thanks for that. Great question, Kira. Um, okay, so thanks for the comments, folks. Uh, any more questions? I'm going to try and get back to all the comments in, in a few moments. Let me know and I'll answer the questions, give you tips uh, as best I can, okay? So let's see then, where are we here? Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, a few instructors here now as well. So, um, Dr. Bob School of Motoring, um, John Kerwin down in, in, uh, down in Cork, down in Mallow. So if you're looking for any lessons down there, give him a shout. Uh, he, I've been in touch with him by email a good bit over the last few weeks. He seems really good, really conscientious, and he has some amazing handouts and amazing literature that I'm hoping to have a more detailed look at and share with you in these live streams or maybe in a video. So if you're looking for any lessons down in Mallow County Cork, get in touch with uh, Dr. Bob School of Motoring. You'll find him on Facebook. I was in touch with an instructor as well called Sean Crowley. 
uh, from Tralee uh, this week, and I hope to link up with him more. He has a great website. He has a program or a, a kind of a course on the, on his website, passfirsttime.ie. So www.passfirsttime.ie. Check that out. He has some great videos as well. And if you're looking for lessons down in Tralee, uh, look for Sean Crowley, uh, driving instructor in Tralee County, Kerry. Um, so the driving instructor this week that I'm using to uh, share his tips is a guy called Rob McHugh in County Kilkenny. So Rob runs Black and Amber Driving School. I think he might run it with his wife, Neve. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that. But it's uh, Black and Amber Driving School in Kilkenny, uh, Kilkenny City. And Rob McHugh is the guy's name, and uh, again, Rob comes across as so likable, so professional, and he has some great tips that he's going to share. Uh, so he shared his top 10 or 11 tips with me, and now I'm going to share them with you, okay, with a few specialized tips, with a few specialized, focusing on Kilkenny, say, just in case you're doing your test or learning in Kilkenny, okay? So let's get on with it then. Rob's first tip, okay? Let me just get to that there now. Here we go. Um, here we are. So the first thing Rob McHugh says is a great tip, and that is to choose the right driving instructor for you, the right driving school, okay? You can look online, you can Google. Most importantly, I think you could ask family and friends uh, who did they get to uh, teach them how to drive or to help them pass the test. Uh, you know, because word of mouth is a great way of searching for uh, an instructor. Look for reviews. You know, you might see reviews on the Facebook, on Google reviews, something like that. And Rob also says, ask to take one or two lessons, you know, before you commit to a package of 10 or 12 lessons. And that's a great idea. And then if, if the first one or two go, you could pay, pay as you go for the first one or two lessons. And if they go well, then you could, you know, then commit to a, a package of 12 or whatever then. So that's certainly a good tip, a good tip there from, from Rob on his, on his first tip there. Now, the next tip for Rob, then, is another crucial one. Always prepare for mistakes, okay? Mistakes happen. You shouldn't worry about them too much. You should try your best to learn from the mistakes and, you know, use it as a springboard for improvement. The mistakes are okay. Uh, they give you the opportunity to improve, he says, and they can increase your confidence, which in turn can decrease your nerves in the long term, okay? Next tip, then from Rob is to learn the basics well and this is so 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 important I was giving lessons to a girl during the week and she was having a little bit of trouble um, with the brake and with kind of taking off because she was kind of driving an older car so I don't think she when she got lessons somewhere else like but I, I don't actually think she did the proper basics when she was getting her lessons like when I'm starting with someone I would always do the basics first in a quiet car park. I wouldn't dream of going out on the road or going out on the hard shoulder in the first lesson. So I'll go to a nice quiet car park. Uh, I'll show them how to use the accelerator, like pressing gently and gradually. I'll show them how to use clutch control so you can creep out in a in a kind of a at a blind junction or something. I'll show them how to move off with the revs because even even in a diesel car, it's good to have a little bit of revs. You know, if you're on a hill or whatever as well. And I'll show them how to use the brake, how to softly brake, and how to be smooth with the clutch. So, I even though this girl was kind of getting ready for her test, I had to go back to a car park with her and do some basics about the brake and the clutch and the accelerator. And that's what Rob is getting at, you see. So, you have to make sure you learn the basics well. The basics, he says, of moving off, stopping, feeding the wheel, a great one as well. And, of course, as I said, the clutch and clutch control. Rob says about Kilkenny, and I'm sure this is true of other, other places as well, Kilkenny has lots of unmarked junctions, whether they're T-junctions or crossroads. They're not marked by road markings. Um, and sometimes in these places, it's good to slow down, get really good looks. Uh, even if you're not coming to a full stop, you may just be kind of creeping out in first gear and leaning forward and creeping out. And having a good uh, understanding of your clutch and accelerator and having good gentle clutch control is really going to help you in that regard now i would hope that if you're doing a driving test you would be at that stage anyway but as rob says it's always good to get the basics done first so it kind of comes more natural to you okay rob's next tip then 
These are tips from, from experienced driving instructor Rob McHugh in County Kilkenny, Black and Amber School of Motoring. Um, choose the correct sponsor. So when you're learning to drive, when you're doing your EDT, make sure you choose a sponsor who's going to give you the time, who is patient and who's going to encourage you to be the best driver that you can and who is going to link up with your instructor as well uh, to clarify things and to get information off him or her. Uh, a good sponsor will give you the time, will be patient and will offer advice and encouragement throughout your journey. So that's very important uh, to, to have someone beside you who has a full license for over two years and is going to be there with you and is going to help you along that journey because uh, they do play an important role for the six or eight or 12 months that you're, that you're on your uh, learner permit. Next tip then, practice. Go out of your comfort zone, Rob says. Absolutely correct. Try different roads at different times of the, of the day. So this is, this is like, if I'm doing lessons, I, I mean, the few lessons I do now, but I would always plan the lessons that I would do something different every every lesson with somebody as long as they're able as, as long as they're at the standard where they're able to move on so for example the first lesson i might do i might stay in the car park and get them used to the controls the gear stick the wheel all that kind of stuff the second lesson then i might go out on the road if they're able to and i might stick with left turns and left turn roundabouts the third lesson then i might again stay with left turns but kind of bring in some right turns and you see where i'm going and then eventually moving on to doing hill starts and then another lesson i focus on reversing like reversing what with the wheel this way and then reversing turn the wheel that way and how, how to straighten up the wheel, all that kind of stuff so this is a great tip from rob when you're a learner or doing a test get out of your comfort zone now don't don't you know don't don't put yourself under too much pressure and, and we'll get down to that tip in a second out of your comfort zone different roads different times of the day again in relation to kilkenny rob says kilkenny has lots and lots of roundabouts of various sizes and traffic levels just just like mo the majority of towns i'd say and in Kilkenny, as with, as with most places, it is very important that you're comfortable on roundabouts, okay? Uh, there's a lot of roundabouts in Kilkenny, same in Wexford, same, I, I, I know Dungarvan as well, a lot of, a lot of roundabouts in Dungarvan, uh, I'm sure it's the same everywhere anyway, so if you're, basically the point Rob is making, if, if you challenge yourself to do different types of roads, different types of junctions, different times of the day, you're probably going to be more confident then uh, doing your test on uh, in in different towns or when when there's different challenges that uh, present themselves. Okay, so next tip from Rob, mirrors. He express um he's saying how important the mirrors are, which which they are. I says to get comfortable with them, uh, and here's the key thing, especially especially if you're changing direction. So that means like you know uh, overtaking, changing lanes, turning left, turning right. Uh, moving off, um, for example, let's say you're 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 waiting to overtake parked cars. So you're waiting behind the line of parked cars because you're waiting for the oncoming cars to clear out of the way. It's so important that if you're waiting five, ten, whatever seconds, just keep an eye on the middle and right mirror for any cars behind you, and then just double check just before you go, just before you move off and overtake the car, just double check again, just to make sure that there's nobody overtaking you at the same time as you're overtaking the parked cars. So the mirrors are incredibly important when you're changing directions, like changing lanes, all that kind of stuff. And also, Rob makes the great point, the mirrors are also so important in slow-moving traffic if you have lots of pedestrians and cyclists around. Because if you're in slow-moving traffic, like, like creeping up at traffic lights or creeping up at a junction, it's very possible that there could be a cyclist on the left or even a pedestrian or a jogger on your left or something like that. So just keep an eye out for that, especially in slow-moving traffic. And needless to say, if there's cycle lanes on the road as well, that there is going to be a potential that you'll have more cyclists there then um let's see what's the next tip then from rob the next tip is also uh so important for the le for the learner as well as the driving test candidate ask questions don't be afraid to ask questions i often there's i often say there's plenty of stupid answers but there's no stupid questions okay so rob emphasizes this uh, a lot it's so important to ask questions because it's part of the learning process okay so ask your sponsor ask your mother or father or whoever you're doing the lessons with or whoever you're doing the practice with about you know see, see what the information they can share ask your instructor that's what he or she is there for he's he or she the one is going to have all the information he's they're the professionals ask them if you're unsure of anything you're always better off asking no such thing as a stupid question um it's rob just says it's it's merely an opportunity to learn 
Um, and I always remember he says as well, um, if you're if you're a learner driver and you're thinking of the question, trust me, plenty of others have probably asked myself or Rob the exact same question. So always ask questions. Remember, folks, information is power. Next one then, Rob says, is about the rules of the road. So he says uh, it's always important to keep a good eye on the rules of the road. Um, the book is here. You can download it as well, uh, free, www.rotr.ie, rules of the road .ie. Uh, The learning doesn't just stop uh, in relation to theory. It doesn't just stop after the theory test. You should keep uh, refreshed on that because sometimes rules can change, sometimes new signs can come on stream. So keep an eye on that because having a good knowledge of your theory and road signs is going to give you a great foundation for being a good driver anyway. Uh, Rob also advises about extra lessons. And they can be a great idea. So even when you've passed your test, the learning doesn't just stop there. I mean, yeah, you've passed your test, but that doesn't mean you're the perfect driver. I think you have to drive at least another 100,000 kilometers to get up to a certain comfort zone. So just because you pass the test doesn't mean you're free from any potential future danger. Rob says it's a life skill, which it is. And, you know, you might pass your test in Kilkenny, for example. But, you know, the roads in, in uh, Athlone or Letterkenny or uh, Belfast are going to be a lot different than the roads in other parts of the country. So it's always good to think about extra lessons. For example, let's say motorway lessons, um, because you wouldn't be necessarily doing motorway driving when you were learning. So it can be good to think about getting one or two lessons with a driving instructor uh, so we can go over some motorway driving and share some motorway tips with you as well. Uh, that could be certainly a great idea. And Rob also says, Learn at your own pace, and this, this is such a key piece of advice. Don't be listening and don't be worrying about what your friends say or what your brother or sister says, that they only needed 12 lessons and they didn't even get lessons for the test. That people love to, t love, to tell sto love to tell stories, you know. Paper never refuses ink, and, you know, people will often embellish their stories. Learn at your own pace. Everyone's journey is an individual journey, okay? Uh, don't judge yourself on others, as Rob says. And, of course, don't jump beyond your ability as well. So if you've just started to do left turns, for example, with your instructor, it might be good just to practice left turns with your sponsor and don't don't jump in and try and do complicated right turns or complicated third exits to the right and roundabout because you might be you might be throwing yourself in at the deep end there and you could be you could be lining yourself up for a, for a bit of a you know you could be lining yourself up for trouble there. So one step at a time, one road at a time. Uh, everyone's journey is individual. Um, so yeah, he just emphasizes that. Um, I think the, the great thing about this, Rob says, is you need to learn, as a learner driver, you need to learn, you need to feel challenged, but not out of your depth. Okay. That's the key. It's about finding that right balance. And the final tip then from Rob is, um, just in relation to Kilkenny again, um, Kilkenny has a big ring road going around it. Okay. And I'd be familiar with that, uh, ring road, uh, and has lots of roundabouts along it. So I'd be... I often, if I was going up there, I'd be coming up from the New Ross direction, from Thomastown direction, and then I could turn left, for example, to go towards the Waterford Road, or turn right to go to the Dublin Road. It, it it's a huge, it's a, it's a huge ring road. There must, I don't know how many. There must be seven or eight or nine roundabouts on that, and you know, it's you've got main roads there as well. You've got you've got kind of uh, Woodies is there. There's, there's a good bit of traffic out there. There's a, there's a couple of uh, out of out of the, out of town shopping centres and stuff, so it can be very busy there. Um, so it's a, Rob says, if ever your your test is on a route where you have lots of uh, main roads and roundabouts on a ring road, it's important that you get comfortable doing 90 and 100 kilometers an hour and get comfortable using fifth and even sixth gear because some cars will have sixth gear that you can go up to after 80 kilometers or 75 kilometers, whatever. So it's important to get comfortable using all your gears um, because sometimes... It's good as well to be familiar with block changing, so from going from fourth to second, for example, because sometimes you'd have ramps that will be kind of close together, but not that close, where, it, where you could have five or six ramps uh, spaced out, so you could actually get up the gears, but then instead, instead of going three and two, you could just go from four to two. So Rob is emphasizing the importance of, of being comfortable with your gears, getting to know your gears, both for block changing, for changing down for a series of ramps, and getting up to fifth or sixth gears for main roads, like in Kilkenny, where there's a big, huge ring road around around the around the city, um, 
as he says, sometimes uh, being comfortable with the block changing can it can kind of take a lot of work out of driving. You know, you don't have to be constantly putting the hand down and putting the back up. Uh, a block gear change is, is great sometimes. Four to two, just 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 takes a lot of the work out of it. And uh, as long as you come slowly off the clutch, the car shouldn't jump. Okay, so I'm very grateful to Rob for sharing those tips. Uh, they are really really uh, there's really great advice there, and uh, thanks a million for that, Rob. Really appreciate it. So if you're looking for lessons in Kilkenny. Uh, look up Black and Amber Driving School, uh, Rob McHugh in County Kilkenny. Okay, folks, let's see. Let's get back to some comments here then, and then we're going to go through this driving test report sheet. I'm going to tell you what the tester said. I'm going to tell you what the learner taught first, and I'm going to tell you four or five really key things that the driving tester told this learner, okay? And one or two of them were actually slightly weird, actually. I, I was surprised, and that's why I chose this sheet, because... He had one or two very strange mistakes, and I was kind of, I, I was kind of slightly surprised that he made these mistakes. So bear with me. I'm going to get to these mistakes now in a sec, and you'll see this, the strange ones I'm talking about. Uh, and hopefully, you know, when I share this information with you, you will take this on board, and hopefully, it won't happen to you. Okay. So a couple more comments, and then we're going to get straight into this report sheet. Okay. So just bear with me, folks. Now the last one I think was Kira Ivers, wasn't it? Um, about the horn. Yes, yeah, so it was a. Don't use the horn from 11.30 uh, to 7. Uh, Alice Kennedy then. Sorry, then I think I worded that wrong. I think that's about the light, the yellow box thing. Let's see now. I was wondering how long the actual test take. Oh, sorry. I, I'm, you were asking about, I thought you were talking about waiting times. So Alice is wondering how long the actual test, t test takes. Is it an hour? Thanks so much. Uh, no, it's about half an hour, Alice. Do you know, it might even, I've heard stories of it being actually slightly less now during COVID, maybe even 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I'm not sure if, if people are just, you know, uh, being a little bit um, exuberant with their stories there. But in my experience, like the few tests I've done in Wexford over the last few weeks, it's still half an hour, 35 minutes, you know. Um, it can take a little bit longer with all the hand washing um, and, you know, putting on face masks and all that kind of stuff. But that kind of you kind of make up for that because the roads are a bit quieter so to answer your question alice the driving test is about half an hour maybe 35 minutes depending on traffic maybe a little less if the traffic is quiet um you know you you will be asked to wear face masks that they provide you will be hand washing the driving tester might do certain checks outside the car like the controls like the secondary controls asking about the wipers asking about the lights and he may step out of the car. Um, well, most of them do step out of the car when, when you're doing the reverse around the corner. So he's not looking you know, at you when you're turning around to look, look behind. Um, but apart from, apart from all that, it's, it's, it's very much the same. So yeah, about, about half an hour depending on the, depending on the route and depending on the, the traffic levels. Uh, cool. cool Emmett has passed his test on Thursday. That's great stuff. I passed only one grade. That's very good. One grade two on rules and checks. Thanks so much for your great videos. My pleasure, cool Emmett. And that's a great result. Uh, only one grade two on rules and checks. So if you got one grade two on rules and checks, probably because you got some uh, questions and road signs wrong, because if you get one question or two wrong, it's no big deal. But if you get three or more wrong, it can be a grade two. But the main thing is you did it, Emmett, and that's great. Congratulations, that's a, a great achievement. Roisin, Roisin Dohany, I always love that name Roisin, it's like, uh, it's Irish for a little rose, so Roche is like rose and Ean is like, you know, small or young, so Roisin is like a little rose. Roisin Dohany, hi Dan, I have my driving test in a week's time and my instructor is telling me to focus on my position on the straight. You know, this is a this is a very good, because I'm actually going to make a video on this Roisin, I, let me just read your comment first before I, before I go into that actually. My instructor is telling me to focus on my position on the straight bends and dual carriageways. Should I keep central or more left? Now, there's a great question, okay? So, I I, I, I really, I receive a lot of emails, folks, uh, you know, about from driving test report sheets. And my email is up there, okay? Uh, in the red writing, daintai at gmail.com. So, if you have any questions on driving, if you want to send me a report sheet like this, like this person here did, email me daintai at gmail.com i will return your email uh, i'm getting a lot of them lately i may it might be a day or two but i will get back to you and i will choose one of them then to do uh, a breakdown here on the live stream uh, the one i choose is usually the ones who give me the best feedback who tell me more information about why they failed or what the tester says but anyway let's get back to roshin's comment position does depend 
on the road you're on and it does depend on the bend. Roisin, I think I would really appreciate it if you could email me at Dane, as in the great Dane, but you know, just call me Dane, uh, danetai at gmail.com. Can you give me an email, Roisin, and I can send you a detailed email about your position, but I'm still going to answer it right now, okay? So the first thing is on the straight. Generally, with position on the straight, you should keep left of center, but that all depends on how wide the lane is, okay? So, there, like, if you have a wide lane, so like it's 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 let's say like uh, like a main road for example, okay, like a like a uh, national road where you can go hundred kilometers an hour. So on that road, you know it's going to be fairly wide. I'm guessing, like you know, so in that case, you can drive very much to the left of the lane. So you can be literally so close to the left that your your wheels are nearly t not touching now, but nearly touching the yellow line, the hard shoulder, okay, and you can you can get a guide for that in, in your left mirror so if you look at your left mirror you can you, you'll be able to see the the kind of do, your door handle kind of overlapping the the yellow lines but if you're in town and it's a kind of a narrow lane it's still it's still a straight road but it's kind of like a like a narrow lane sorry in that case you, you kind of just have to stay central because if you stay left you're going to be too close to the curb and you may end up going to drains if you if you stay you know too much to the right you could you could be and you know getting in the way of oncoming cars so that's on the straight, Roisin. The next one he asked me is, is um, on the bend. Now, on the bends, this is this is very important. Like it, it all depends on the bend, you see. That's why I want you to email me so I can, so I can email you properly and the information. But if it's a bend that um, disappears to the right up ahead, so it goes like, you know, disappear. I don't know if that makes sense, but like you're, you're on a bend, the bend disappears to the right up ahead, okay? In that case, you should stay more left. Because that way you're going to have a better view of uh, of oncoming traffic, and you're going to increase the distance between yourself and the oncoming cars. Now, if the bend goes to the to the left up ahead, okay, so if it kind of disappears off to the left around eleven o'clock. In that case, you just stay a little bit central, in accordance with the markings and in accordance with you know while paying attention to oncoming cars. But if it's a left bend, stay central because you're just going to have a slightly better view of oncoming cars. And then on dual carriageways, well, again, on dual carriageways, you have to watch out for the arrows on the road. But generally speaking, if you're on a dual carriageway, just stay right bang in the middle of your lane, okay? Because, again, okay, if, you, if, you, if you're on the left of your lane, uh, you, you could be just, you know, straddling the hard shoulder too much. If you're on the right of your lane, you could be interfering with other cars who may want to overtake you. So generally on a dual carriageway, stay central. But Roshan, if you email me, I'll give you a detailed re reply to that. And on that, folks, it's a great time to let you know that this week, I'm hoping, all going according to plan, I'm hoping to have a video up on position on the straight, okay? I have gotten, as I said, I've got a huge amount of emails, but so many of the emails actually have position on the straight. Just like this this report here beside us, you know, you can see it up at the top there, one grade two on position on the straight, and Roshin is asking about it as well. So I'm hoping to do a video on that where I can break that down in a little bit more detail and give you some tips and advice, hopefully this week, fingers crossed. Uh, Thomas Fitzgerald, a few more comments folks, and then I'm going to get into this report sheet here and I'll get back to the comments. Uh, so let's see, Thomas Fitzgerald, can you take a five minute break? <laughs> can you take a five minute break during the test to relax? Um, no Thomas, you can't take a five minute break during the test to relax. Uh, sorry to say, uh, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I say you're messing when you're saying that. No, yeah, yeah. Trust me, Thomas. If if you're if you're, <laughs> I can't believe he asked that. If you're focused and concentrating and the adrenaline is flowing, you don't you don't need to take a five minute break during your test. Uh, if you need to take a five minute break during your test, you're, you're um, you know, you're you're maybe you're not concentrating hard enough. Now, if you have issues or if you have you know, if you have anxiety or if you have a medical issue or something like that, I I think. I don't think that would be a problem, yeah, but you, but you have to tell the tester that at the start so he's aware of that, uh, and I'm sure that the tester will facilitate that if, if it's a genuine thing, like, but uh, as regards just a five minute break, like like a, like a tea break or something like that, no, no. Kira Ivers, you're very welcome. Mark T, hi Dan, thanks for the heel toe tip, oh, it's probably to do with the accelerator, I think, yeah, last time it helped a lot controlling the revs and helped me pass my, oh, that's, that's great, Mark, well done, congratulations. Uh, glad that helped you. So I was saying to Mark and others last week or the week before that some cars, like like Toyota Yaris, for example, are a bloody nightmare to get the revs on. Okay, so you have to have your heel on the ground. Um, so, so a little bit that. So heel on the ground like like that, and just kind of 
gently, gently uh, press the accelerator because if you don't have your heel on the ground, it can be hard to accelerate it. Like, like the heel on the ground kind of takes the weight off your leg in many ways. And it's so important just to kind of softly, gradually practice the revs. Don't look at the revs though, because if you look at the revs, you're kind of you're you've been too focused. You have to keep your eyes on the road, like so. Do it without looking, because that's the whole the whole point. But I'm I'm I I don't think I've made a video on that. I I, have, I may have done I may have touched on it a couple of years ago in a video. But I think that'll be another great one to to make. Actually, maybe I want to get the position one done first anyway. But thanks for that, Mark. Okay, so uh, maybe two more comments, and then we're going to get into this report sheet here, where we have some really I like really interesting information. Um, Gemo Reckless, I'm watching your video because my reversing skill is poor. Well, I have quite a few videos on reversing Gemo. Um, Daintai at gmail.com if you want to uh, get in touch and I will give you some tips, advice and I'll forge on some of my videos on reversing straight and reversing around the corner uh, if you want, okay? Okay, last comment for a minute then. Tara D. I then the tester asked me at what age of your passengers are you responsible for them wearing your seatbelt? I guessed 18, but not sure if that was right. No, 17 there, Tardy. So you, because it, it, it corresponds with the age that you're allowed to uh, to drive, okay? So if the, the tester asks you what age uh, are, are you responsible for them wearing your seatbelt? So if the, if the, your passengers are 17 or under, it's the driver's responsibility, but anything over than that, it's, it's their own responsibility, but you should, you should always be encouraging people to wear the seatbelt. Uh, but thanks for that, it's a good question, Tara, thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, so let's get on to this um, report sheet here then, folks. I'm going to go through this report sheet, and I'm going to explain some of the faults, but I'm going to start off by letting you know what the tester told this guy, okay? And this this is crucial information. Uh, hopefully you can take this on board so these things don't happen to you, okay? So let's get straight into it. What the tester said to this guy. Okay, so the first thing he said, the tester said that this driver spent too long in first gear in housing estates on the uphill. Tester felt the engine was getting very loud, wasn't kind of, didn't sound good, wasn't good, environmentally good uh, in, in slow moving traffic. So you see folks, uh, that's where you got the marks then for gears. You see there, you got three marks for gears. Actually, one grade one, which is minor, and then the blue one is a, is, is a slightly more serious one, but not fatal. But he got three marks on gears. And this is, as the tester says, too long in first gear in housing estates and on slow-moving traffic uphill. First gear is generally just for, you know, creeping out maybe, or, or just starting off. Like It's not like you really don't want to be thinking of first gear as a driving gear, okay? Uh, it's not environmentally friendly. You should be getting up to first, up to second, excuse me, up to second gear as soon as you can. Especially in the petrol car, the car will be well able for it. And if 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 for some reason the car does struggle, that's okay. Just put the clutch back in and, and slip her into first gear and go back again. But again, you have to read the road ahead. And if you if you if you're planning ahead and you have a good bit of space, don't spend too long in first gear. You don't want the engine getting loud, okay? If you let your engine get loud or if the engine struggles, you're all, you're going to risk a mark on gears, okay? So that's the first thing the tester said. The next thing the tester said then, on the reverse, that, um, okay, this is slightly bizarre here. The tester said, and, and the, the, the learning driver confirmed this, he didn't have his handbrake up fully when the tester got back in the car, okay? So that, I mean, that, that in itself could be serious, but, but, we haven't even got down to the red one yet, which 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 you're, you might not believe, but anyway. So the learning driver here, he done a reverse around the corner, and I think he done it fairly well, um, because although you got a mark there on competency, as you can see, it wasn't for the competency of doing the reverse. The reverse, I think, went reasonably well, and he looked behind quite well as well. But when the tester got back into the car, he, he must have felt that the car was kind of rolling back a little bit, because the driving learner driver didn't actually pull the handbrake up fully now i'm not sure why i'm not sure what's going on there it could be that the maybe the handbrake was a bit finicky or some people have this habit of keeping the button in you know you know when you pull the handbrake up and you, and you, ha you have the button in and uh, I, I, I never understand this i mean people got, and, and they have the button in and they're pulling up the handbrake with the button in the whole way up and what happens then is when they let go of it then the, the handbrake drops it. The handbrake can drop an inch or two, and all of a sudden it's not up fully. So I always say to people, 
yes, put the button in when you're pulling the handbrake up. Have the button in for the first say you know the first half or the first the first you know three quarters of your uplift of the handbrake. But for the last twenty twenty five minutes, don't have the button in on the handbrake. Just just let go of it like that. Let go of it and just you use your fingers and pull it up. Yes, you're going to hear clicks. It's going to go click 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 to get up. But that's great. That's great news. That's what you want. You want to hear those clicks because when you hear those clicks, at least then you know that the handbrake is up fully and secured and up fully. Okay, I don't like it's 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 for your own safety because I'm not saying this guy was doing that, but it it's something like that. There was something it, some issue with his handbrake anyway that he wasn't pulling it up. Okay, so that was the second thing. Now the next thing the tester said that um, the tester said he braked too harshly because. Uh, the learner driver was trying to clear a yellow box, but then he had to stop because of traffic up ahead that he probably didn't anticipate. Uh, the tester said you weren't planning and reading the road ahead, and that's why you had to. St okay, you wanted to clear the yellow box, but you stopped too harsh then. And this is this this is a classic example here, folks, of not reading the road ahead and not planning ahead. So the learner driver was so focused on clearing the yellow box and giving it a bit of juice to get away from the yellow box so he wouldn't get stranded in it. So focused on that. That he didn't read the traffic building up ahead and that's what that's the as i said in my videos numerous times the key to passing the test is reading the road ahead not just focusing on the one thing not just focusing on the here and now but but thinking like what's 50 60 70 meters up ahead of you so because he he tried to get out of the yellow box braked very harsh um didn't anticipate the traffic up ahead and that's why the tester gave him a mark there on hazards uh, up above there you can see there's two marks on hazards um for for not planning ahead in that situation another thing the tester said that he was too slow on right turns on a few occasions two occasions you can see on the report sheet there that tester felt he had plenty of opportunity to go on a right turn but he was just too slow too hesitant and didn't take the opportunity to turn right now i know you know it can be tricky sometimes to know when to go but the bottom line folks is you have to show good confidence you have to be decisive if you have a gap you have to go i know you have to be a little extra careful on right turns because you you know you could be crossing two lanes instead of one but try and read the situation ahead where the other cars are coming from so let's say there might be a car on the left for example so you're, you're turning right at a stop sign for example okay and there's a car on the left coming down there and you kind of you're, you're kind of wondering what what's going on so ask yourself how fast is that car coming okay is he kind of going at a steady speed is he increasing speed is he going up a hill the other car if the other car is kind of steady speed or maybe slightly slowing down and he's going up a hill well that might give you an opportunity to go then especially if you're waiting in first gear and you, and you have your feet ready and you know you like for example you're in first gear you have your right foot just hover over the accelerator you might even have your left hand waiting on the handbrake you know if, if you're ready to go and you're aware of the topography for want of a better phrase like the, the the hills and all that kind of stuff you might be able to make the better decision then but anyway whatever the reason was anyway maybe you just learn was a bit nervous a bit a bit hesitant on a few right turns but the worst one of all is coming up here folks um he got a grade three mark on handbrake because at the end of the test the handbrake wasn't fully up and the tester had to grab the handbrake to stop the car from rolling back I presume this was in the car park at the end of the test. So right at the end of the test, the tester had to reach over, pull the handbrake up, because the learner driver wasn't, uh, for some strange reason, wasn't pulling the handbrake up fully, or the handbrake wasn't engaging fully. I get, I'm, I'm only speculating about that button thing I mentioned a while ago, that how I say you should not press that button in the full way up. Uh, I, I've seen it before many times. Um, it might be something to do with that, but basically like needless to say folks if the tester um you know has to reach across and use the handbrake to stop the car rolling back because you haven't used the property i mean that is you know it's, it's not going to end well then let me just say it's not going to end well so as i said uh this guy wasn't pulling his handbrake up fully um and the car was rolling and that is not a good thing especially because it already happened on the reverse on the corner so he didn't uh for some reason he didn't cop on that this could be an issue and it happened a second time, and I mean that's you know that's never that's never going to be good. Like I mean, if you would think he would have learned from the incident in reverse, but unfortunately not. But I'd say he'll uh, I'd say he won't make that mistake again. 
So you need you need eight marks or less to uh, pass the test. So this guy got what? If you just think about the blues for a second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think eleven there if I'm counting correctly. So, like, if he had been a bit more decisive, if he had to sort out the gears and sort out the handbrake thing, he probably would have got it because it doesn't look like he's a terrible driver. It looks like there's a few issues with the vehicle controls, a bit of progress, you know, hazards and all that stuff, but nothing too much there. So hopefully he can learn from this. And, uh, and and be better and, you know, um, get it next time. But he really, really needs to get a grip on that handbrake because that, that, was a, that was a disaster with the handbrake there, okay? So let's go down to the other things then that he didn't mention. So first one up there, position on the straight. So that was like the comment from Roshi in there about your position on the straight does depend on the road. So generally on a good straight road, you should keep left of centre. It does depend on how wide the lane is. So on, on wider lanes, you can keep more left. On narrow lanes, you're probably going to have to keep central because you, you can't, you don't have much room to play with there. But there's another very important tip, folks, on position on the strip, which which comes up as well, and I, I want to, I want you to listen carefully to this one. Let's say, for example, you're taking a right turn, okay, and on the next road, uh, after your right turn, the road splits in, splits open into two or more lanes, okay. So you're taking a right turn and you're coming onto some kind of a dual carriageway or some kind of where there's two lanes going going the one way you must 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 always start off in the left lane okay the left lane sometimes people lose marks on position on the straight because when they take a turn and they end up starting in the middle lane or the right lane instead of the left lane okay that's a big mistake i uh, got an email from a fella there about two weeks ago i think and he drew a little diagram for me so he was taking a right at lights and he was going on to a three-lane kind of dual car. I think it, was, it might have been up in Dublin, South Dublin or somewhere like that. Maybe, uh, I, I'm not sure. But it reminds me of that road around Cornell's Court near Black Rock there in Dublin. So he was taking a right turn. And he ended up starting in the extreme right-hand lane. Uh, he got a grade three for it. Um, and I am not really surprised. Because if he's taking that right turn there. Um, now, unless the road markings and signs say something different. Or unless the tester says something different. When he's taking that right turn there, he should always start in the left lane. So position on the straight could be in relation to that, but more often than not, it's in relation to not keeping left of centre on a road. Or maybe 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 the maybe the person was 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 too much to the left, like you know, and, and too close to guard. It all depends on the on the situation. Um, reaction to hazards. So I think we 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 got one of those already. We we mentioned because the learn driver mentioned about he was trying to give it a bit of juice to, to clear the yellow box uh, and he didn't anticipate the the traffic in front and you see that word there anticipate that is the key word there to passing not just passing the test but but to, in relation to being a good driver so because he didn't anticipate the traffic building up ahead he probably had to brake suddenly but reading the road ahead is all about saying to yourself in your head what do you see so for example you might you might um you might be on a road and you could say to yourself, okay, there's a bit of an uphill ahead there, so I'll give it a little bit of juice. Uh, there's a pothole, a pothole up there, so I'm going to just gradually come out. There's a yellow box there, I want to be aware of that. Then there's a mini roundabout, and further up then there's, there's a pedestrian crossing and a bus stop. So it could be a bus uh, you know, pulling in or pulling out of there. So there are the kind of things you have to say. Try not to focus on the one thing too much. Try and read the road ahead as best you can, and, and that can help avoid getting caught up by hazards then, okay? Now, progress, we mentioned that already, uh, turn and right. So he was too slow, too hesitant on a right turn. Also at roundabouts, um, so he was a little bit hesitant. Now, we only got the green one there at roundabouts, so it's a grade one, so it's not serious. But the tester said he was a little bit slow, a little bit hesitant um, at the roundabouts. So again, it can be down to practice. Um, I'm not saying this is the reason, but you, sometimes the, 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 the key thing here is, is to try and judge the other cars as well as your own ability so it's important for yourself to have ability for yourself to have belief in your ability to move off so you as a driver should be able to move off quick you know get the bike give it a bit of juice and get out of there if you can do that that's a start then you can turn your attention to the other cars like are they slowing down are they kind of far away that you could chance going um, what's their indicators telling them what way are they on a roundabout like are, are their wheels slightly turned this way or that way you have to read all these things like are you on a hill like if you're if you're on an uphill 
and they're coming downhill well you might want to be careful then because that you know you could be slightly delayed because of the hill and they could be picking up speed because they're going downhill so just you know it's it's tricky it, dep it does depend they're all so different like but basically he was a little bit hesitant anyway turning right and at roundabouts uh vehicle controls and this is where the real problems were so clutch um he didn't say anything about this clutch let me see did he give me any info he didn't give me any, anything on that now he gave me plenty of other info which is you know the, which is great but now the clutch it could be a few things i mean if you lift the clutch a little bit quick and it's kind of kind of jerks and jumps that's not going to be good you're going to lose marks on clutch then you have to be a smooth driver and being a smooth driver part of that is, is having a nice gentle uplift off the clutch so you have a nice smooth transition into gears uh, it could have been coasting coasting is when you when you have the clutch in too long and you're 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 pressing the clutch in too much uh and that's that's not good like i mean that that's kind of speeding the car up so it could have been something to do with that um uh gears then so we mentioned it was probably because he wasn't uh getting up or down the gears properly what was it he said was it something to do with ramps in the house instead was it yeah i think do you remember the first thing I said there? He, he was spending too long in first gear on, uh, he mentioned a couple of uphill housing estates. So maybe he was, maybe because he was going uphill, he was kind of concerned about the power. But really, folks, second gear is a very powerful gear too. So one, once once the engine makes a little bit of noise, you really need to you know get out of first gear and get up into second gear because you can't have the engine getting too loud. So, you know, the gears have to suit the speed. So, for example, if you're starting off be in first gear because that suits the speed and then as the engine gets louder get up to second gear and then if you're on a good decent stretch of road 50 kilometers fourth gear and then if you're on a main road or, or a regional road you might be thinking about fifth gear then depending on the traffic flow you know so the gears have to suit the speed you can't let the engine struggle and you can't have the engine getting excessively loud because that's not good the handbrake we already mentioned in simple language he wasn't using it properly he wasn't pulling it up fully it wasn't engaging properly and it was roll uh, the first one was for rolling back um as the tester was getting out i, I don't know which which i actually don't know which was the red one was there, there was two handbrake ones what the the one was for the car was rolling back a bit as the tester was getting into the car uh when he was finished reverse on the corner and the other one was at the end and in the when he parked up at the end the tester had to reach across and pull the handbrake up so for whatever reason he wasn't pulling the handbrake up fully which is you know unfortunate and slightly bizarre too but uh, and then the reverse then uh competently i think that i i think he he said he got the mark there because of the handbrake thing on the on the reverse because he didn't pull up fully but sometimes when people lose marks on uh competency on the reverse on the corner it's because they maybe went too wide on the reverse or they hit the curb or they didn't didn't straighten up properly or they oversteered or anything like that if you have any issues on the reverse around the corner just give me an email and i can send you some tips and videos on that so all in all like it wasn't the worst test but i find i found the mistakes with the handbrake um very very unfortunate and they shouldn't really be happening to people doing the driving test i'm not 100 percent sure whether it was the car whether he wasn't familiar with it or he just wasn't pulling the handbrake off fully I, you know it's, it's hard hard to say for sure because he only sent me a few emails but uh hopefully folks the lesson is there for you if you are using um if you are whatever car you're using your, your own car the instructor's car when it comes to using the handbrake especially on the hill uh, make sure you have it up fully and properly engaged so the thing doesn't roll back because the last thing you want in your driving test is the tester reaching across and you know grabbing the wheel or grabbing the handbrake because you didn't do it right i mean that's 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 uh that's not a good look is it okay folks so let's see then let's see uh let's get back to a few comments here then uh keely o'grady hi i failed yesterday three grade twos on clutch i have a problem going down to first to stop and keep coasting i don't know how to fix this i'm confident in everything else well luckily for you keely i do know how to fix it uh but you're probably going to have to email me and i can send you on my links and my videos but you have to think more break less clutch you do not need the clutch okay the, the the clutch is not a crutch it's going to cause you problems if you use it too much so the brake is the one you use to slow down and then when you go from say third to second gear you have to come off the clutch nice and slowly i mean come off the clutch slowly don't 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 like don't fly off the clutch because the car's going to jump but the smoother you are with the clutch the better it's going to be um if you want to email me i will i will um 
send you an email on that and I can send you some links uh, to help you there. Uh, every age should wear a seatbelt. Yes, you're not wrong there, Abdo313. Potato then, um, make sure you're ready to answer the are you an essential driver question before the test. Yes, I got sent away with absolutely no notice of me knowing I have to be, I have to be essential. Um, so, Potato, you didn't know you had to be an essential worker doing your driving test. I, I, God, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but uh, it's it's well known that you you cannot do a driving test unless you're an essential worker. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Um, but at least you know now anyway. Uh, so that that's the important one there, folks. He the tester is going to ask you, are you an essential worker? Uh, he's not going to look for any proof that you are, but you have to be an essential worker. To do the driving test if you're not an essential worker you shouldn't be doing the test you should be cancelled and making way for somebody who is an essential worker then okay um henry adiel i think whoa just passed my driving test then that's great news henry well done uh great job um you are obviously a very very good driver so congratulations and thanks for thanks for letting me know can I make a contribution with Revolut? No, I don't have Revolut yet. Uh, I probably should, I suppose. Uh, I've, I've, I always see it coming up on ads on YouTube. Uh, I don't have Revolut, uh, Henry, sorry. But uh, if you want to make a donation by PayPal, I'd be incredibly grateful. And uh, it's completely voluntary. It's up to you. My PayPal details are in the majority of my videos in the description. And they'll be in the description to this, okay? And hopefully I'll, I can source some of them Revolut in the coming uh, weeks and months hopefully but well done on passing and thanks for your for your support uh jalal yousefi i've passed my test brilliant and your videos are magic well you know just have been called worse i suppose thank you so much i wish you the best you're very very welcome and congratulations on passing your test that's brilliant uh i'm delighted that you found the videos useful and uh you're clearly a great driver so well done on well done on passing um janice kelly hi then do you could you give some driving tips tips on driving an automatic regarding stopped on a hill and lights love your videos yes i've made a video on automatic cars there recently and folks if ever you were looking for automatic driving lessons in north dublin check out ian daly um ian daly driving instructor safety first driving school ian daly he is top and in automatic instructor in north dublin okay but automatic, if you're stopped on a hill, I would say, if you're in an automatic car and you're stopped at, on a hill, I would still recommend using the handbrake because automatic cars are not immune from rolling back. I've given lessons in plenty of automatic cars and they, they have a habit of rolling back. Not not much like, but just, just it might roll back like like a foot or so before the, before the automatic brake kind of kicks in. So I'd still uh, use the handbrake on a hill um, at lights. Uh, definitely use the hand unless you're unless you're stopping just like a split second on a downhill or it's a very short stop on the downhill or a very short stop on the flat you, you, you don't have to then but if you're any any longer than four or five seconds you should use the handbrake at lights in an automatic and wait in d wait and drive because if you wait and drive you're you're, you're ready to go like it's the same as waiting in first gear in a manual so definitely use the handbrake if you're on a hill um if you're at lights if you're stopped a long time and the majority majority of the time in your test, you should wait in drive, like in a queue, uh, queue with lights, uh, at a stop sign, something like that. Watch out for the creep too. You know you don't want. Sometimes automatic cars are going to creep a bit faster than others, so just just be careful that you're you're controlling the creep. And um, you can certainly use P for park if you're if you're parking up for the turnabout or you're parking up for the reverse around the corner. But other than that, just just try and stay in drive the majority of the time. Okay um but send me an email there janice if you want and i'll I'll send you my video on automatic cars that i did in conjunction with ian daly there uh from north dublin um just to, just briefly on on screen there folks as i said my paypal link is there is there you, the link will be in the description to this video soon once i once i type up once i type up the description if you want to make a voluntary donation i'd really appreciate it but always remember if you have any questions on driving uh any comment you want to say any email that you want to send me I will respond and reply uh, in a detailed way, regardless of whether you make a donation or not, okay? 
uh, the, the PayPal donations are completely voluntary. It's completely up to you. I don't ask for a certain amount. I don't ask a bit in order to reply to email. I will always reply to your email and your questions anyway. It's just if you want to make a voluntary donation, it's certainly appreciated. My email, as I said, is there, danetai at gmail.com. Any driving test report sheet, any issues with driving, email me. I will get back to you. NDLS there, the driving test center, the, the National Driver Licensing Service, so for anything to do with your learner permit, uh, you're, you're applying for your full license, check out ndls.ie, great website, and they, they, they have, uh, they're always updating it with, with the latest information. ncts.ie, that's like the website for your NCT. Uh, from July, cars, all cars have a, a, a four-month extension, but it, it can depend on the original expiry date. So go to NCTS, that's the NCT website, and you can about halfway down the page you can you can put in your reg to to see if your uh car is due in nct okay and the other one there myroadsafety.ie that's the go-to place folks if you want to apply for your test or manage your driving test application okay uh try not to ring the rsa don't don't email that there'll, there'll be an eternity getting back to you you're you're, you're better off going with uh myroadsafety.ie uh and you hopefully will be able to choose a date and have all everything you need in relation to applying for your driving test on that site okay anyway let's get back to some comments then folks before we get on the home straight here then um let's see alice kennedy that's great thanks so much dan your videos are great that's great alice thank you uh, any questions i'm here i uh, appreciate the support ronan Keneally, hi kira do you mean when at a t-junction turning right onto a major road can you turn on the yellow box on the major road if like yeah well i was kind of wondering about that too ronan yeah baz fitzgerald any tips for getting cheaper insurance for a newly qualified driver uh not really baz it's it kind of like i was just shopping around isn't it it's the name of the game like isn't it it's all about shopping around i know some learners have that i've given us to have this little kind of box in the in, in their car it's like a like a speed monitor box. I don't know who does. I I can't remember who does it now. There's so many out there. I don't. I don't know. But the best thing, the best, the only thing you can do is just just shop around there. You know, I, there's there's so many insurance companies out there, and and as I said, some of them may give you a good deal if you have um if you have that kind of speed monitor in it. But I I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a hundred percent sure on insurance companies or anything like that, or or who's the best, who's the cheapest. It kind of fluctuates so much. You know, um, I used to point people in the direction of a of a broker in waterford called hooper dolan uh hooper dolan insurance waterford they they they, they look after young drivers as well um but really just just shop just you have to shop around you know um you might get a good deal with aviva or axa because they they have uh, viva driving instructors and axa driving instructors so you may get something like six months free insurance there or six months hot whatever it is that that they, they would have some great deals there but probably more aimed at beginners um in in that case sarah 93 did my driving test and passed in october 2020 brilliant only asked me one under the bonnet question driving part was about 30 35 minutes that's something yeah corresponds with the way i taught you tester got out of the car for both the reverse around the corner and the turn well that's interesting and the turn about yeah the, they don't usually go for the turn but then it can happen folks so that's a great <clears throat> great comment by sarah dot 93 there Congrats there, Sarah, on passing in October. That's great. Uh, you're clearly a good driver. And since October, if you've been driving, you know, you've picked up, you know, three or four months there of good experience uh, since October. So best wishes to you. And thanks for sharing that information about the bonnet there uh, under the bonnet checks. Only the one question he asked you. 30, 35 minutes was her test. And tester got out of the car for both the reverse and the turnabout. So sometimes, as I said, well, the majority of the time, they'll get out of the car for the reverse. And as, as Sarah said, possibly the turnabout as well so they don't have any close contact with your with your face as you're looking around okay so that's just as as part of the covid guidelines now andrew lee passed his test too the other day in fingless that's brilliant thanks for your help dane you're a legend wow well, you know as i say get in lane with the great dane but congratulations to you andrew that is a great great achievement and well done you're obviously a very good driver aaron power did all my edts with one instructor edts is essential driver training um they're the compulsory lessons that you have to get uh when you're learning to drive you have to get 12 compulsory lessons um unfortunately aaron failed his test because of coasting 
I had to switch instructor and they noticed the costing. Some instructors aren't very observant. Yes, yeah, so you know, it does depend on the instructor. Some, I think it's it's like in any job, folks, some instructors are going to be more um, aware and more passionate than, than other instructors. So, you know, it's... You had an an unfortunate experience there. If you, if if the instructor didn't notice the costing or didn't think it was a big deal, uh, you know the instructor wasn't paying attention. That sounds like you weren't getting your money's worth there. Uh, but at least you you switched anyway, and the new instructor noticed it, and that's good news. Um, so hopefully you you'll. I'm not sure if you've passed the test subsequently or or not, Aaron. But uh, hopefully you'll get it uh, very soon if you haven't. Keely O'Grady, more left. I did test yesterday and was two in the middle. Oh, this is for the position, I think. Yeah. So I think Keely O'Grady is saying that you needed, to, she needed to keep more left of centre. You know, that that's usually what it corresponds. So if you're on a if you're on a good decent straight road, you need to kind of keep more left of centre, um, because this girl Keely seemed to be more in the centre, more in the middle of the road, and I'm hoping to do a video on that very very soon as well. Uh, Roisin Dahani, thanks so much. You're very welcome, Roisin. Uh, best wishes to you. KK, how did they get a grade three on the handbrake? Oh, I'll tell you now, KK. One sec. So you 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 must have just joined us. I, I was mentioning earlier at the so the, the, I'll I'll explain two the I'll explain the two, the grade two on the handbrake and the grade three on the handbrake because I because the the learning driver didn't explain which was which. He thought the grade three was for the following. At the end of the test, the driving tester parked up in the car park at the end near the test centre. And the tester then had to reach across to pull the handbrake up fully because I think he said the car was rolling back and the learning driver didn't notice it was rolling back. So the tester had to reach across, pull up the handbrake so the car wouldn't roll back any further at the end, at the very end of the test as he was parked up in the test centre car park. And as I said, it's never a good look if a tester has to reach across and pull the handbrake up. The other handbrake one then was when the tester was getting back in the car after uh, the reverse on the corner. The handbrake again wasn't up fully. So the driving learner driver wasn't pulling the handbrake up fully. And I think the car was rolling back slightly as the tester was getting in. And that is, you know, that is just not ideal, folks. You know, that's why I was saying when you're pulling the handbrake up, uh, you should not, not, not put the button in the whole way up. Okay. You should have the button in for some of the way up, yeah. But just for the last, like at least the last ten or ten or fifteen percent, don't have the button pressed in. Just, just hit, like make sure you hear the clicks, so so the 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 handbrake will will engage properly. Uh, I I in this situation, folks, I know you might hear some kind of things about oh, you my instructor or whatever said put the button in because so you don't hear the noise and all that stuff or something about where i don't care about any of that i don't i don't even care if a tester says to you that if, if whoever they're saying they're they're, they're wrong okay they're wrong. what i'm telling you is right y yes have the button in but don't have the button in for the last bit you need to not have the button in for the last bit because what happen it happens in my car i've seen it hundreds of times in my car if you have the button in and you and you let go of it at the wrong time what happens is the handbrake can kind of drop down a little bit and all of a sudden it's not up fully and the car could roll back so just bear that in mind there. That's how this person lost marks on the handbrake. Um, so Kira McCaffrey. Oh, sorry. Don't let me just get back to Kira there. Let's get my comments back. Uh, where are we? Um, okay. When do you think driving lessons will be back? Kira McCaffrey. Don't know, to be honest. I'd say March, though. I'd say March, middle of March, maybe. Uh, they might be back. At the moment, we're just doing the odd few lessons for people who are essential workers for the driving test but no no edt at the moment so i'd be guessing march maybe maybe middle or end of march hard to say though care we're just waiting on uh, on advice from the authorities you know abdurrahman hassan gotta stop drinking alone with learner permit he sent me drinking i driving alone is it I, I, i'm guessing driving alone uh, with learner permit he sent me 80 and take two points and while i didn't pay the fine i think you mean i had crash on the side of the road will i get a ban from driving um yeah probably well there's there's a comment and a half so 
I'm thinking this guy is saying Ab Ab Abdiraman Hassan that the guard has stopped you for driving alone with a learner permit. He gave you a fine of eighty euro and two penalty points. Uh, while I didn't pay the fine, or I, I'm guessing you're you're saying while you were waiting to pay the fine, you had a crash on the side of the road, and then you're asking, will I get a ban from driving? Well, I would say so, Abdiraman, because you really shouldn't be driving alone with on a learner permit. Um, and if you had a crash on the side of the road, well, you know, there's a reason it's a learner permit is to give you permission to learn not to drive alone. So you need to be uh, taking the whole learning to drive thing seriously and not driving alone. Have a sponsor with you. Or if you can't do that, don't drive alone. Just focus on the lessons. I would assume you'll get a ban from driving, um, Abdiraman, and you'll probably deserve it. Uh, Lewis Clark, State of the RSA. Yeah, they're kind of an interesting bunch, you know. Um, what can I say? They, it is, people are, you know, they're finding it hard to get in touch with the RSA. Uh, the, there is a lot of demand on the service now, so you'll have to bear with them. Um, I know there's been teething problems too with the myroadsafety.ie uh, website slash portal. But I think that's a great system in the long run. I think I think it'll work out great in the, in the long run once they get over the teething issues. But yeah, I know it, it, is, it is tricky trying to get in touch with them. But for anything to do with the driving test, folks, go, uh, if you want to apply for the test, manage your driving test, pick a test date, go to myroadsafety.ie, okay? You'll have more luck there than trying to get in touch with the RSA. Alice Kennedy, when I'm waiting to take the right turn, do I keep it in gear one? And is it okay to leave my foot on the clutch here until I go? I have a habit of keeping my clutch in and my right foot ready. Well, if you're, you can certainly wait. I would always advise someone to wait in first gear um, as you're waiting to take your turn. And you, I mean, you have to have your foot on the clutch then because if, if you don't have your foot on the clutch, it's, you, you can't be in first gear. The gears are going to grind like so. So yeah, you, you can be waiting in first gear uh, with your clutch in because you have to have your clutch in if you're in gear if you're waiting for if you're waiting in gear i mean um you have a habit of keeping my clutch in and the right foot and, and have your right foot ready yeah i mean have your handbrake up as well if you're stopped on a hill or if you're stopped longer than four or five seconds and uh yeah you could you could be ready i mean the more the more ready you are alice the, the better the better you'll be you know um so yeah just don't be uh I wouldn't be revving up the car though too much while you're waiting. Like o only give it a bit of juice when you're when you're going. Like you, you don't want to be revving and getting a really really strong bite while while you're um you know while you're while you're waiting like that. That's just putting the car under pressure and you're just wasting petrol. But it sounds to me like you have the right the right idea there. If if that doesn't make sense to you, just comment again down below or send me an email daintai at gmail dot com. Aidan O'Brien called the RSA to get on the cancellation list there during the week. She said, as long as we are in level five, the waiting times for a test is six to seven months. Shocking. Yeah, um, it depends if it, it does depend, Aidan O'Brien, if you're a essential worker. Like, I, like I've had people who are essential workers get, get a driving test date in literally two or three weeks. Like, so um, if you're not an essential worker, I mean, is that what you're saying? And you didn't say if you're an essential worker or not, but six seven months yeah i mean it's there's going to be a backlog about that until things until things get back to normal yeah i'm not not that surprised by that uh comment to be honest with you wear flip-flops i never use the handbrake on my test well did you pass um maybe you did maybe you didn't um it's 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 not relevant to me but by what you use it on the test like but my my philosophy is what's good for safe driving in the future like what what's I try to teach people how to drive and promote my videos based on what's the right thing to do, not what's going to get you through a test in a half hour time frame in some insignificant provincial town in Ireland. Good safe driving is for life, not just for one test, like, you know, uh, and that's what I think you should take from it. So you should definitely be using the handbrake if you're on a hill, if you're stopping the park or let someone else, let, let someone out of your car or... Uh, someone coming into your car if you're at traffic lights if you're uh, stopped a long time any kind of hill you should use the handbrake okay if you got if you never use on your tests well i'm not sure that was a good idea but uh you know that as i said good safe driving is for life anyway alice kennedy how did you do the hill that's a good question actually by alice yeah how did you, how did you do a hill start actually did he 
did he? Where is this guy? Oh, here we got used it. Oh, he says he used it for just a hill start, never touched it afterwards. Okay, and did you pass? I wonder. Im Imogen, this is. Uh, we'll see anyway. Um, sorry, I'm I'm the person who who said he never used the handbrake. Sorry, wear flip flops. So, uh, how did you get on the test anyway? Then wear flip flops. But uh, anyway, thanks for sharing. Um, okay, folks. So I'm just gonna get through the rest of the comments, folks, and then we're gonna kind of call it a day. Um, let's see then. Uh, Keely O'Grady sent. Oh, great! Sent an email. Thank you very much, Keely. I will get back to you hopefully in the evening time. I say I usually respond to my emails in the evening or early evening. So thank you for that. I will get back to you and I'll share with you some information and tips there, Keely. So thanks for that. Um, Florence M. Hi then. Have I have not driven in eight years. Do you think I need a refresher course? Well, <laughs> it reminds me like is the Pope Catholic? Uh, depends on Florence if you're. Like, are you a learner or not? Um, I say in a, in what whether you're full license and you haven't driven in eight years, or you're learning to drive and you haven't driven in eight years, it's probably no harm to get a refresher course, yeah. Um, because you know you can't go, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, if you do get some kind of a refresher course, like a couple of lessons, like, uh, I would be guaranteed that you will learn something and it'll help your confidence. So I would say yes there, Florence. Yes, we're flip-flops. Oh yeah, we had that. Imogen says, thanks, Dane, for all your videos. My pleasure. Very helpful. Pass my test in Waterford. Waterford, what a great place. I spent a lot of time down in Waterford. Only one grade two. That's brilliant. So well done to you, Imogen. IMO or LMO, whatever that is. Uh, delighted you found them helpful. Um, and congratulations on passing. Wonderful achievement. Al An Annalyn corpus let's support dane to have fifty thousand subscribers he deserves well thank you very much annalyn I, I appreciate that uh any support if you hit that subscribe button hit the like button on the videos too i certainly appreciate it thank you very much and annalyn corpus appreciate that comment uh tile co i think if i'm saying that correctly craft play games can you fail the test um for holding the steering wheel wrong yes you could um it may start off as a minor mark it may evolve into a grade two mark um and possibly it could it could accumulate into uh, a reason for you failing by sheer accumulation or it might even be a grade three as well it, it does depend but when you're holding the steering wheel you should generally hold it in the quarter quarter to three position because that's nice and balanced um your forearms then are away from the airbag and you have easy access to the indicators and your uh lights you know the controls like button near the wheel uh when your feet when you're turning the wheel left like make sure you feed the wheel like that don't cross the hands like that uh, it takes practice i have a video on it let me know if you want me to send you the link for the video um but yeah you have to steer properly um kira ivers is it oh kira again maybe we're getting some clarity here now so sorry that's what i meant when turning right from a side road um onto a main road so from a onto a main road it's like a t yeah it's like a stop sign I'm, I'm, i presume there and there's a yellow box can i turn into this box when the light is red or should i wait well let me see. you could turn into that if i'm i'm just trying to visualize it there yeah you you could uh turn into that because that's that's the whole uh idea of that no, it it does depend on the on the junction. So you're you're on a side road, you've gone onto a main road like a T junction. There's a yellow box. Can I turn into this box when the light is red, or should I wait? You have to make first of all, you have to make sure that you're not obstructing anybody in the other lane. So make make sure that the back of your car is not uh is not stuck out or is not kind of blocking the road. But there should not be any problem there with you turning right onto that because you're allowed enter the box and wait on it when you're turning right as long as you don't cause an obstruction to the other cars using the other lane so yeah that seems it seems fine there because the, so, sometimes the idea well in a lot of cases the idea of having the box there is to give uh, a, a kind of an opportunity for cars from the side road to pull out yeah so i would my initial instinct start carrier yet yeah, that that is fine but again i don't know the junction you would be just better off clarifying that with a driving instructor in your kind of locality just to be sure there but it sounds to me like there's no problem there molder x sorry let me go back up there now uh molder x i booked my test in september last uh september last 
nearly five nearly five months now the RSA are saying that they uh they're just taking essential workers only how so so I have to wait longer will I, will I be good? yeah you could be you could have to wait a while there Mulder X it, it all depends on how quickly we vaccinate everybody and how when they get tests back to normal it's hard for me to say how long you'll be you'll be waiting there you know the it's it, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky one but i i know it's i know it's tough for for um non essential workers um so unless you're an essential worker um it looks like you could be waiting a while there uh, on that so i know i know that's unfortunate jack relihan passed my test wednesday in cork just want to say thanks but you're very welcome jack and congratulations on on passing the test in cork uh you, you obviously did a, did a did a great job Agart Berisha, I passed my test in Fingus last week, first time. Just want to say thank you for the awesome tips regarding the test. My pleasure, Agart, if I'm saying that correctly. And congratulations to you. Well done on passing your test. Adrian O'Connor, Dane, is there any move towards sat nav directions in part of the test and bay parking as is as in the UK? No, not at the moment anyway. Uh, I think that'd be great though, Adrian O'Connor. I think that would be absolutely brilliant. I think that that is the sat nav thing is a really great thing. So where where the where you uh, get an instruction from the satellite navigation, and you have to follow that instruction because that kind of reflects modern life, modern driving. It's it's brilliant, and parking as well. It'd be great if that was if that was brought in. I do have bay parking videos, but um, in in Ireland we have the twelve lessons as well. You see, so that's 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 also a very good thing. The compulsory lessons, but. To answer your question, I don't think there's any plans to bring them in, but I do think they would be great if it if it ever was brought in. Um, Keen Gallagher, would it be a good idea to do my test in a different test center if I could get a sooner date there? Yes, Keen, you 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 could if you wanted it, and that is completely up to you. I normally say to people do do the test in the place where you feel more most comfortable, most familiar with. But then again, if you're a good driver and you're a good confident driver you should be able to pass tests in any test center. So that's your call, Keen. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that idea. It could be a good idea though, yeah, if you want to get a sooner date. Habib, when starting to reverse around the corner, should I begin looking from over the left shoulder and end by looking over the rear window or 360 starting from the left shoulder? To be honest, Habib, I, do, I don't think it matters too much as long as you're looking okay. I normally say go start with the left and finish with the right. But uh, in the reverse around the corner, the, the looks should be kind of be done regularly. And should be refreshed so it doesn't matter hugely as long as you do it properly okay but i would say from left to right would, would be the best one although i doubt it matters too much itera joseph your videos are fantastic my pleasure itera joseph uh thanks for tuning in and glad to help gorav joshi hi then i have a learner license i also have an international driving license can i drive in my international license i've done my reduced uh essential driving lessons six lessons you can drive on your international le international driving license for for a year um the, usually the first year that you're in ireland but after that first year you should be having your done your full your gone through the learning process of edt reduced edt in your case six lessons and the test so yeah you can drive in your international license but usually that's only for the first year of your residence okay um i'm not sure if you have a test coming up but i would certainly be encouraging you to pa to do the test and pass the test and regularize your situation there uh gaurav joshi and the best look to you gaurav if i'm saying that correctly alice kennedy thanks dana just wondering if i should go into neutral i never do but i'm just checking in case they give me a mark for keeping my foot on the clutch while waiting it wouldn't be alice it wouldn't really be a a, a mark like it i mean it's you can go to neutral like if you want but it, it wouldn't be wrong like it but it's just better to wait in in drive if if it's about the automatic thing you're talking about there the automatic lessons something like that might not be as um a serious thing but um you know it's 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 usually better to wait if you're in a manual car wait in first gear or if you're in an automatic car to wait and drive it just kind of helps you move off quicker and get you away quicker although you could you could wait in neutral oil if you're if you're further back in the queue you know like a traffic light, if you're seven or eight cars back you could, you could wait in neutral then and give your foot a rest but yeah it does depend on the situation okay so let's see then folks and get through these comments here now and uh before we finish up uh let's see i'm gonna find my comments there now um where was i um okay sean oh oh mahuna should you drive slowly when approaching traffic lights if they are green or speed up you see it depends how far away you are i would certainly not speed up i would be kind of driving at more or less the same speed 
but maybe slightly slower if the, if they've been green for a long time. Okay, you always have to be wary there, Sean, of a stale green light, a light that's been green for for a long time, and if the junction is empty. But then again, there comes a time when you get to a certain stage with the lights where you 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 you, you, you can't stop. Like you know, when maybe let's say you're you're ten meters out and you're going whatever thirty kilometers, even if the light turns amber, then you have to keep going if. It would be a sudden uh, stop uh, that 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 would require you breaking suddenly, you know. So to answer your question, it depends on the lights. It depends how far away you are. But I certainly wouldn't be going. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be increasing the speed. I'd be kind of keeping the speed fairly steady, uh, depending on your. Of course, it depends on how fast you're going as well. Um, Florence M full license. Yeah, that's the plan for ours. Uh, top model Missy High Dane. What do you check? What do you check before starting the engine? They asked my friend this question before her test. What do you check before? Well, you you, I, you have to first of all you have to make sure your your seat is okay. Uh, that that you adjust your seat. Then you just make sure your mirrors are all set. You know that that, that you're comfortable in the car. You're, you you can reach the pedals. The mirrors are adjusted properly. Uh, you would make sure you're in in neutral gear before you start up. Make sure the handbrake is up fully. Um, put on your seatbelt and uh, you know make, make sure your wheel is adjusted as well okay so that that, that the wheel is you, you, you can reach the wheel okay think think solo for that like solo s-o-l-o -O, solo so s for seat just the seat o for observe the mirrors make sure the mirrors are sorted l is like like a like like a like a shape of an l like you know like like the the gear stick the handbrake and the belt like like it's like you're, you're drawing an l if you look down you're drawing an l and the final o is the shape of the wheel so things like that can can help you there to to uh, get ready for your journey. Avoid check for low bell. If you had an opportunity to change something in the driving test, what would you change? I would certainly add in uh, parallel parking, bay parking. I would uh, also have um, definitely more parking. Avoid check. Um, reverse parking, forward parking. Uh, having the sat nav thing in it as well, so where where you have to follow the satellite navigation, I think they would be uh very very um beneficial as well. So I would yeah, um so they, and hopefully maybe they'll come in soon. We you never know. Lynchy, well then, just passed yesterday. Thanks for all the video. You're very welcome, Lynchy, and congratulations to you on passing. Great job. Um, Alice Kennedy, just a tip for anyone. It started raining during my test. I put on my wipers when I stopped. I forgot to turn them off and I got a mark for it. Yeah, that can happen. That can happen, folks, because you're concentrating so hard, you forget to turn them off, and and that can be a mistake because you're only you're only you're you're wearing out the wiper blades. You know, you're 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 doing unnecessary wear on the wipers. So, if if it does start raining, make sure you you know you're aware of your wipers, of course, front and and back if you need them. But the demisters too. Make sure you don't let the car's windows fog up. You really don't want your windows fogging up. Okay. Uh, but remember then to turn the wipers off, as Alice said. That's a great tip there as well. Uh, Gorev is waiting for a test. Yeah, are you, not, are you an essential worker? I'm not sure. But the best look to you anyway, Gorev, whenever the test is. Um, Jay Mondi, like Don Host. Okay, not not sure what that means. Uh, thanks, Kira Ivers. Th you're very welcome, Kira. And uh, Kira has her test next week. Okay, well, best of luck to you, Kira. Uh, I'll be back next Saturday uh, at 12 as well. So hopefully you'll tune in and let me know how you get on. And my email is there, as I said, Kira, daintai at gmail.com if you have any questions. Uh, Jay Mondi TV, you're very welcome. He says thank you for all the tips. You're very welcome, Jay Mondi TV. Uh, I've just finished my driving test pass today. Congratulations, Jay Mondi. Congratulations. That's brilliant. Pass your test. You're obviously a very capable and very good driver, so well done. Shout out. Uh, pass my driving test today in Fing so in F and Jay Mondi in Finglas. Yeah, so that's great. A lot of people from, from, that, from Finglas tuning in today, folks. So well done, Jay Mondi. That's a great job. Um, best of luck to you. Now, next step onto the end plates. And remember, folks, you can you can drive alone on your end plates, but you have to wait until the full license arrives in the post, and you have the full license in your hand before you can drive alone and before you can put the end plates up. Okay, so just just to make sure on that one. Uh, Keen Galler, cheers. You're very welcome, Keen. Um, so the last couple of comments, folks. Going to be signing off now in a few minutes. James O'Connor, can any essential worker apply for urgent test? Well, if you're an essential worker, James, yes. Check out the list of essential workers on uh, www.gov.ie or just Google it and you'll find out. But if you're essential, yeah, retail, manufacturing, healthcare, yeah, you can apply then. 
Jay Money, very helpful YouTube channel. Thank you. Very welcome, Jay Money. Congratulations again. Cahill Murphy, hi then, had my test yesterday in Gory. Fell down on observation. Um, when moving off and turning left. Any tips before I take my test again? Uh, corner. I'm, I'm an essential worker, so hopefully we'll get one soon. Yeah, so observation moving off. Well, observation moving off is usually to do with the blind spot, okay? So either you weren't checking it, or you were checking it maybe like this, not doing it properly. You have to get a good, proper blind spot check moving off. Observation turning left. Well, some people, when they're turning left, they kind of end up looking to the right all the time, you know, like at a T-junction, and they're looking this way all the time. You have to, you have to look both ways. Like, you have to kind of look both ways, because there could be a cyclist on the other way, or, or, or a car's park or something like that. And you have to creep out as well. Like, like if you can't see, or if, if, if your vision is obscured, you have to kind of edge out a little bit, okay? Uh, if you want to send me an email, Cahal, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some, some links on that, okay? Joe Sullivan then says, how regularly do you check your mirrors when driving on a straight road? Ah, about 7 or 10 seconds, Joe. It depends on maybe a bit more if you're about to take a turn or if you think you're going to be taking a turn soon. But normally every 7 or 10 seconds on a good straight road is fine. But just remember, Joe, it's more important to be thinking what's ahead of you, okay? Like what's, what's in front of you rather than what's behind you. Alan123, how long... Hi then, how long more do you think it will last until regular driving tests can resume and not just prioritise essential workers? I would say, that's hard to say, I'd say it could be April or May. It all depends on the vaccine programme you see as well. Uh, it's very, very difficult for me to say. I'd say we might there might be a little bit more flexibility in March, but in reality you're probably looking at the start of the summer before things get back to normal. But again, I'm only speculating. And lastly there then, Mr. Notorious, you're the reason I passed my test, you are a legend. Well, you know, so they do call me the Great Dane, like, but congratulations to you, Mr. Notorious, glad to hear that, and well done on passing, great job. Okay then, folks, so just to finish up then, um, as I said, this person here, the report sheet, he failed mainly on vehicle controls, and the two on the handbrake were the killer, didn't pull the handbrake up fully, and the tester had to reach across to pull up the handbrake at one stage, uh, he wasn't getting up the gears enough, bit slow turning right too and didn't read the road ahead he had to break break suddenly a few times and remember folks reading the road ahead is the key to passing the test okay um special thanks to rob McHugh for his tips uh, on uh driving and doing the driving test in Kilkenny, which i went through earlier uh black and amber driving school so if you're doing lessons in Kilkenny, uh make sure you check out uh black and amber driving school rob McHugh, great instructor um my email address daintai at gmail.com any questions you have if you want to if you want me to go through a report sheet let me know but if you're going to send me a report sheet folks please 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 give me some information that i can work with you know like don't don't just send me the report sheet and say any tips then let me know what you thought uh you did wrong let me know what the tester said to you you know the more information you share with me the better the feedback will be um www.ndls in blue there for your driver's license or for applying for your learner permit check out their website for any information and updates there ncts is for the nct you can check your nct this there you can check your nct validity there is a four month extension but it might not apply it does depend on the original start original expiry so you can uh, type your reg into the, on that website halfway down and you'll be able to see um how your nct is looking and for anything to do with my road safety uh, sorry, for anything to do with applying for your driving test, myroadsafety.ie is the online portal to go. You can manage your test application, apply for your test. You might be able to pick a date. Go to myroadsafety.ie for anything to do with your driving test, okay? i got a couple more comments in there. For I'm going to be signing off now in a few minutes. For, I'll try and get these um, few comments. Mr. Notorious, we got that. Yeah, Owen O'Neill, driving testers, okay. Um... Oh no, Neil, you done your driving test 15 minutes, a very short test on and uh Hilda Chan then uh what centre would you suggest to take a driving test in Dublin? Well Hilda, I don't know the whichever one you want, you know, whichever one is close to you, probably whichever one you're more familiar with, uh would probably make the most sense. Um but I wouldn't have any information or opinion on what's easier to pass or what's what's the best one. I wouldn't know Dublin well enough for that. But I'd always say like you should go with the test centre that you're more familiar with around the roads and that probably will suit you best. Okay, folks, so I want to say thank you for tuning in. 
I really appreciate it. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your comments. Um, I'm here to help you. My email is there. And um, I really appreciate all your support and all your kind words. Thank you very much. And anybody learn to drive, the best of luck. Um, anybody, Hilda Chan, you're very welcome, Hilda. Thanks for thanks for your comment. Anybody learning, best of luck. Anybody with a test coming up, um, you know, I'm here to help you. And the very, very best of luck to you. Uh, Phil and saying, any motorway tips after passing? Yes, Phil, check out my videos on motorways. Um, I have two videos on motorways. Just type in day and tie motorways and you'll, you'll see my videos on motorway driving. So the best of luck to you folks if you've a test. Thanks for uh, sharing your time with me here on Saturday and stay safe.